Welcome to Pharmacology! Hello! In this section, uh, we'll look at a group of drugs called the nitrates, which I also call, like to call them the Superman drug. Right, nitrates are a group of very useful drugs to be used, especially during, uh, for different angina conditions. So before we go through about the specific information of nitrates itself, uh, let's look through about in general what happens in the cellular level um, to control the relaxation or the contraction of the blood vessels. So first of all, let's, uh, let's look at the relaxation section, which is indicated by this NO. NO is the short form for nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is um, the key component from the nitrates family, whereby uh, nitric oxide or NO uh, is actually a gas. So it can freely diffuse through the uh, lipid bilayer of the membrane of the cells to activate this guanyl cyclase, which then causes an increase in the cyclic GMP, which then activates this myosine, myosine light chain phosphatase. As a result, it dephosphorylates the myosine light chain to cause the relaxations in the cells, in the blood vessels. Uh, in contrast, just to introduce you, the opposite component of NO, which is actually uh, indicated by this calcium ions, uh, obviously it enters the cells through the calcium channel, right over here. So in contrast, this calcium ions, which then uh, eventually cause the phosphorylation of the myosin light chain, which causes the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle cells. So next, uh, this NO is actually something which is endogenously found in the body. So um, the, the action of NO requires the cooperation between two different cell types, as indicated in the diagram, whereby, um, which is the endothelial cells, and also the vascular smooth muscle cells. The endothelial cells is the cells which are directly exposed uh, to the blood, to the flowing of blood, to the, sorry, to the blood flow um, in the blood vessels. Therefore, it's exposed to all sorts of agonies and so on and so forth, which are circulating in the blood. Right, this causes um, the synthesis of NO through the action of this ENOS, which is. Uh, indicated by this endothelial nitric oxide synthase. So the formation of this uh, NO which causes the diffusion of NO to the neighboring cells which is the vascular smooth muscle cells to cause all the relaxation effect eventually. So how do we get NO from the outside source i.e. from the drugs? So we can actually get it from two different sources, which is this sodium nitroprusside, which, is, which directly and spontaneously releases NO into the system, right? Uh, but the more commonly used drug is actually based on this organic nitrate family of the drugs. So you can see here, um, the release, the eventual release of this NO until this section requires the effect of these various enzymes and proteins um, indicated by this S here, right? One, two, three, four, over here. So this S refers to this thiols group, actually. So this thiols group um, is actually um, a group of a part of what we call a reaction a component of the enzymes, right? So these enzymes are obviously uh, available endogenously. And they actually have a definite amount, meaning there's not something that um, it can be unlimited supply of it in a way. So um, you can see that this um, effect of the effectiveness of these nitrate drugs will depend on the availability of this thio groups or thio enzymes at that moment. Because if all these thio groups are depleted, you can see these organic nitrates could not cause the release of NO, which then causes the uselessness of the drug. Right. So therefore, this brings in the concept of tolerance towards the drug. So you can imagine if you give a person with organic nitrates, the more or the higher amount, higher and higher, more and more amount, doesn't mean that there'll be indefinite higher amount of uh, relaxation occurring in the vascular smooth muscle cells because it's limited by all this availability of the thiol group, right? So there's two parts. So the the part that I talk about just now about the drug is actually caused about the it's called pharmacological tolerance, 
Another thing is, um, don't forget about the physiological tolerance whereby um, the body could not tolerate indefinite uh, relaxation um, of the blood vessels. So the, blood, uh, the body actually sense that this is not too right. So it actually causes increase in the sympathetic activity to then causes the constriction and also increase in the heart rate, for example. Right, so pharmacological tolerance is quite easy to prevent, whereby you just uh, schedule the drug quite far apart in the way between each doses, meaning you don't give them just one after another. Right, so what are the hemodynamic effects of nitrates? So these are the important ones. So first let's focus on this preload section because at the therapeutic dose, which is at the lower side of the doses, the main effect that it causes is actually a reduction in the preload to then cause a reduction in the myocardial oxygen demand because there's lesser amount of blood which flows back into the heart to cause the heart to be stretched a little bit lesser. So at the lower dose is mainly the venous dilation. So it causes an increase in the venous capacitance whereby um, there'll be more blood sort of temporarily stagnant at the veins uh, to then cause a reduction in the right ventricular and left ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume. Right, so there's lesser amount which flows back. Right? So don't forget um, this kind of relaxation again the body could sense um, that if it's given it, if there's too much of vaso, uh, venodilation again the body will sense it and causes a reflex tachycardia which is what we will actually prevent and we don't want because obviously the reflex tachycardia would again cause an increase in the myocardial oxygen demand which is what we don't want. Right so um, at a higher dose it can actually cause um, a uh, here redu a reduction in the after uh, in the afterload, right? Again, to cause a reduction in the myocardial oxygen demand, it's also here uh, something to note that um, <coughs> this effect of the organic nitrates are clever in a way whereby they specifically prefer to dilate the large epicardial arteries, not the small ones, right? Because if they causes a dilation of the small ones, it can actually causes this coronary steel phenomena. Right? So this sort of stealing will sort of like drag the blood away from the large arteries. So because the steel phenomenon is causes right, the dilation of the coronary resistant vessels, which is the smaller one. So whereby uh, if, if these smaller vessels are dilated, again blood will sort of be stagnant in these arteries. So again causes lesser blood supply in a way. So um, again, at large doses, so again, um, all these effects and specificity of the site of action of this nitrate, again, is limited by the dose. So again, at the higher uh, large doses, everywhere will be affected. So it can actually cause um, excessive reduction in the mean arterial pressure to cause hypotension, so the flow of dizzy, flushing, and so on. And, and the serious part actually causes MI because there's not enough blood flow in the, in the heart, right? So not good. So nitrates are good drugs as a summary, but uh, give them at the correct doses and at the correct timing. Right, so there are some benefits and delirious effects of nitrates in the treatment of angina. So you can see, have a look through over here. So again, we try to reduce all this uh, ventricular volume and so on. But what we want to pre prevent is actually at the reflex tachycardia. Okay, so examples of the drug, so the most famous Superman drug, as I call it, is actually called GTN, GTN. So another name is called nitroglycerine. So this fella here it actually has three, has, can donate, can form three groups of NO in a way. So we can form this intermediate drug. So uh, this is actually uh, converted by the organic nitrate reductase in the liver. Right, the half-life is really short, it's just about five minutes, then it's gone. Right, so uh, but <clears throat> the pro drug here is actually longer. It can last about forty minutes. Right, but here comparatively, there's other drugs here called this is ISDN as a short form, isosobite dinitrate, which has a half life of about half an hour. Uh, sorry, about an hour. So again, requires activation over here. Right, so to form two um, intermediate pro uh, drugs in a compound. So the good one here is called isosorbide 5-mononitrate or we call it um, ISMN. So this, has, this drug ISMN has the longest half-life among all of this. Right, right so after denit uh, denit denitration, so organic nitrates undergo glucuronidation and excretes out and off the body. 
right so another good part of this ISNN is that its uh, bioavailability is actually 100% because it is an active drug by itself it does not require further activation like these two friends here which is GTN or ISDN so that's why M ISMN is more commonly used for the daily dose Right, so it, because it can cause this high therapeutic plasma concentration and um, it also causes some, because the half-life is just 4 hours, so it's just nice. So we can give it as a daily dose, whereby there will be some periods of time which has low nitrate levels to allow the thiol group to recover. Remember the thiol group from the second slide. Okay, so there are examples of other drugs, which is uh, nitroprusite. So uh, this is supposedly the better one, which doesn't require a lot of enzymatic action, so there's no problem of tolerance. However, based on the structure, uh, there's actually cyanide group, so that's why it's a little bit more toxic than the others, so it's less, more or less likely to be used. Um, however, it's available in IV form, so it can still be used under um, very immediate or A&E conditions. Right? So, yep, it's reserved for um, hypertensive emergencies. Okay. Right, so, yep, all the toxicity effects of the cyanide as mentioned here. Right, so, um, this chart again to emphasize the three main drugs in the family. So, this is the GTN, the ISDN, and ISMN. So, here just to tell you that there's actually different ways of, ad of administering this Superman drug. So there's tablet forms, um, so the sub sustain release. Um, but the commonly found is the subcutaneous form. It can be uh, as a spray or as a subcutaneous tablet, right? It can also be as a patch, um, and so on and so forth, right? So, yep, there's the Superman. So just a brief overview about how good this Superman is. So I like to call it Superman drug because it's something that can cause um, a venal a veno dilation in the in the heart so you can imagine if someone is having some chest pain so you need something very very fast and very effective um, drug to be useful and in this case GTN is the candidate drug so it causes a very rapid effect of the dilation of the heart vessels which then causes um, a more uh, increase in an myocardial oxygen supply so therefore your heart sort of like would not feel pain anymore because don't forget the pain uh, from the heart like for example heart attack and so on it's actually like a danger signal right so when there's pain so it's actually an indication that some cells in the heart are actually dying so they're sort of like screaming for oxygen so once the uh, oxygen supply is restored in the heart so the pain will go off right it's most most useful because it's fast it's cheap it's effective so um, it's very fast, it can, the effect can kick in in 1 to 2 minutes, so it's really really good. But obviously like um, in any other emergencies, do not rely on the Superman to save you every time, if not it won't work. Uh, don't forget the reason because of the tolerance as mentioned just now. Right, so uh, this drug, because remember it's, um, it's more, you know, the NO is like gaseous and so on. So this bill is actually quite stable if you can store it properly. So for example, you, uh, you keep it in an amber bottle in a glass container, uh, protect it from moisture, from light, from extreme temperature. So imagine if you are in a hot climate country, uh, do not leave the tablet in the car because it's probably be gone. Right, so um, some people realize that uh, because it's sublingual, so basically you just put it under the tongue. So the, if you just swallow the tablet, you'll be useless. So um, if you put it under the tongue, the tablet actually causes some burning sensation. But if there's no sensation, it doesn't mean that it's useless. Right, so yeah, it can be used uh, as a prevention if it's like you sort of know that the heart attack, the heart chest pain will occur prior to exercise or stress. Right, so the regime to use it is really simple, so the person, you just make sure the person is seated because don't forget it can cause hypotension, dizziness and so on. Make sure the person is seated and put one tablet under the tongue for 5 minutes. If not, if the pain is still there, then repeat the process. But the third tablet, um, if it still causes, doesn't relieve the pain, it's time to call the ambulance. Right, so yep time for further checkup but again as I say this is um, it's something that do not rely on the Superman to save you all the time right so that's all for today see ya